Hello students, welcome to the subject of Programs for Rural and Urban Development. In this, let us see the lesson Programs for Women. Let us understand the various programs for women, for girl children and adults and girls and also the shift in approaches. Women are given a top place in India from the ancient time. However, they were not given empowerment to participate in all areas. They need to be strong, aware and alert every moment for their growth and development. Empowering women is the main motto of the development departments because an empowered mother with child makes the bright future of the nation. There are many programs and schemes started by the government of India in order to bring women into the mainstream of development. First, microfinance through SHG approach. The self-help groups initiative was adopted by India several decades in order to elevate poverty and improve women's ability to achieve rights and well-being. At the beginning, SHG was an initiative undertook by NGOs but later on due to its success in improving the life standards and delivering public goods and services, Indian government engaged in facilitating access to financial resources. The ninth plan document that is during 1997 to 2000 laid emphasis on the participation of people in the planning process and the promotion of self-help groups. Self-help group is a homogeneous group of poor women. This group is a voluntary one formed on areas of common interest so that they can think, organize and operate for their development. It is a village-based financial intermediary committee usually composed of 10 to 20 local women or men. A mixed group is generally not preferred. Most self-help groups are located in India though SHGs can be found in other countries especially in South Asia and Southeast Asia. Members make small regular savings over a few months until there is enough capital in the group to begin lending. Funds may then be lent back to the members or to others in the village for any purpose. In India, many SHGs are linked to banks for the delivery of micro credit. A self-help group may be registered or unregistered. It typically comprises a group of micro-entrepreneurs having homogeneous social and economic backgrounds all voluntarily coming together to save regular small sums of money, mutually agreeing to contribute to a common fund and to meet their emergency needs on the basis of mutual help. They pool their resources to become financially stable taking loans from the money collected by the group and by making everybody in that group self-employed. This system eliminates the need for collateral and is closely related to that of solidarity lending widely used by microfinance institutions. Thus, the SHGs function on the basis of cooperative principles and provide a forum for members to extend support to each other. It is considered as a means of empowerment. SHGs organize very poor people who do not have access to financial system in the organized sector. Let us see the historical evolution of SHG. By the late 1980s, Mirada, an NGO located in South India, formed around 300 autonomous SHGs known as credit management groups. The National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, NABAD, found SHG as an interesting and effective strategy to provide banking services to the so-called unbankable people. NABAD is an apex financial institution for agriculture and rural development which has facilitated and promoted the SHG bank linkage programs in India. Its mission is to promote sustainable and equitable agriculture 
and rural prosperity through effective credit support, related services, institutional development and other innovative initiatives. Between 1991 and 92, NABAD in consultation with RBI, commercial banks and NGOs launched the pilot project of linking the SHGs with commercial banks based on NABAD guidelines. By the late 1990s and early 2000, given its success, the government had become a key promoter of SHGs. Decentralization of power at the panchayats level in 2004 gave local bodies more teeth and SHGs came to be recognized as a powerful institution for the poor. By March 2005, the program had provided credit to 16,18,456 SHGs with a membership of over 24 million poor families making it the largest microfinance initiative in the world. Let us see the objectives of SHG. They are to inculcate the savings and banking habits among the members. To secure them from financial, technical and moral strengths. To enable availing of loan for productive purposes. To gain economic prosperity through loan or credit. To gain from collective wisdom in organizing and managing their own finance and distributing the benefits among themselves. Next, to sensitize women of target area for the need of SHG and its relevance in their empowerment. To create group feeling among women. To enhance the confidence and capabilities of women. To develop collective decision making among women. To encourage habit of saving among women and facilitate the accumulation of their own capital resource base. To motivate women taking up social responsibilities particularly related to women development. It acts as the forum for members to provide space and support to each other. The SHG broadly go through three stages of evolution such as group formation, capital formation through the revolving fund, skill development and taking up of economic activity for income generation. For SHGs formed under the Swarnajayanti Swarojgar Yojana, subsidy would be 50% of the project cost subject to a ceiling of 1.25 lakh rupees or per capita subsidy of 10,000 rupees whichever is less. There is no monetary ceiling on subsidy for minor irrigation projects for SHGs as well as individual Swarojgaris that is self-employed. Next program is NABAR SHG Linkage Program. Self-Help Group Bank Linkage Program SBLP aims to deliver financial products and services to the section of Indian population that lacks access to formal banking. This segment often from the lower income meets its financial needs through informal sources such as money lenders, traders, family and friends etc. Many self-help groups under NABAD's SHG bank linkage program borrow from banks once they have accumulated a base of their own capital and have established a track record of regular repayments. This model has attracted attention as a possible way of delivering microfinance services to poor populations that have been difficult to reach directly through banks or other institutions. By aggregating their individual savings into a single deposit, self-help groups minimize the bank's transaction costs and generate an attractive volume of deposits. Through self-help groups, the bank can serve small rural depositors while paying them a market rate of interest. NABAD estimates that there are 2.2 million SHGs in India, representing 33 million members that have taken loans from banks under its linkage program to date. 
this does not include SHGs that have not borrowed. The SHG banking linkage program since its beginning has been predominance in certain states showing spatial preferences especially for the southern regions Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. These states accounted for 57% of the SHG credits linked during the financial year 2005 and 2006. The advantage of financing through SHGs are an economically poor individual gains strength as part of a group. Besides, financing through SHGs reduces transaction costs for both lenders and borrowers. While lenders have to handle only a single SHG account instead of a large number of small sized individual accounts, borrowers as part of an SHG cut down expenses on travel for completing paperwork and on the loss of work days in canvassing for loans. SHGs have significantly empowered poor people especially women in rural areas. The next program is Indira Gandhi Matrutva Sahyog Yojana. It is a conditional cash transfer scheme for pregnant and lactating women. It was introduced in the year 2010 to contribute for improved health and nutrition to pregnant and nursing mothers. It addresses short-term income support with long-term objective of behavioral and attitudinal changes. Being implemented on experimental basis in 53 selected districts using the platform of Integrated Child Development Services Scheme, 12.5 lakh pregnant and lactating women are expected to be covered every year under IGMSY. The beneficiaries are paid 4,000 in three installments per pregnant and lactating women between the second trimester until the child attains the age of six months on fulfilling specific conditions related to maternal and child health. Pregnant women of 19 years of age and above for first two live births are eligible under the scheme. All government or public sector undertakings that is central and state employees are excluded from the scheme as they are entitled for paid maternity leave. The wives of such employees are also excluded from the scheme. One Stop Center OSC is intended to support women affected by violence in private and public places within the family, community and at the workplace. Women facing physical, sexual, emotional, psychological and economic abuse irrespective of age, class, caste, education, status, marital status, race and culture will be facilitated with support and redressed. Under this scheme, in the first phase, one OSC will initially be established in each state or union territory to facilitate access to an integrate range of services including medical, legal and psychological support. The OSC will be integrated with 181 and other existing helplines. Women affected by violence and in need of redress services could be referred to OSC through helplines. The objectives of this scheme are to provide integrated support and assistance to women affected by violence both in private and public spaces under one roof, to facilitate immediate emergency and non-emergency access to a range of services including medical, legal, psychological and counselling support under one roof to fight against any form of violence against women. The OSC will support all women including girls below 18 years of age affected by violence irrespective of caste, class, religion, region, sexual orientation or marital status. For girls below 18 years of age 
institutions and authorities established under juvenile justice that is care and protection of children act 2000 and protection of children from sexual offenses act 2012 will be linked with the osc Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana is a welfare scheme of government of India launched by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in 2016. The government has set a target of 5 crore LPG connections to be distributed to the BPL households across the country under this scheme. The objectives of this scheme are empowering women and protect their health reducing the serious health hazards associated with cooking based on fossil fuel, reducing the number of deaths in India due to unclean cooking fuel, preventing young children from significant number of acute respiratory illnesses caused due to indoor air pollution by burning the fossil fuel. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Clean India Mission and abbreviated as SBA is a national campaign by the government of India covering 4041 constitutional cities and towns to clean the streets, roads and infrastructure of the country. The campaign was officially launched on 2nd October 2014 at Rajghat, New Delhi where Prime Minister Narendra Mori himself cleaned the road. It was performed in remembrance of Mahatma Gandhi's words. It is India's biggest ever cleanliness drive and 3 million government employees and school and college students of India participated in this event. The main aim of this mission is to eradicate open defecation by 2019. To convert the insanitary toilets into poor flush toilets to remove the system of manual scavenging, to make people aware of healthy sanitation practices by bringing behavioral changes in people, to build up the urban local bodies strong in order to design, execute and operate all systems related to cleanliness. The program is really a boon to women residing in villages because of its objectives like eradication of open defecation. Rashtriya Mahila Kosh RMK established in 1993 is a national level organization as an autonomous body under the sponsorship of the Ministry of Women and Child Development for Socio-Economic Empowerment of Women. RMK is a facilitating agency wherein RMK provides loans to NGO MFIs that is microfinance institutions termed as intermediary organizations IMO which led to SHGs of women. RMK extends microcredit to the women in the informal sector through a client friendly without collateral and in a hassle-free manner for income generation activities. The aim and objectives of Rashtriya Mahila Kosh are socio-economic empowerment through multi-pronged efforts, providing microcredit facilities, capacity building of IMOs and women beneficiaries to promote and support experiments in the voluntary and formal sector using innovative methodologies to reach poor women with credit and other social services, to promote and support schemes for improvement of facilities for credit of women. The next objective is sustenance of their existing employment through generation of further employment for asset creation, for asset redemption and for tiding over consumption, social and contingent needs. The National Social Assistance Program is of the Government of India that provides financial assistance to the elderly, 
widows and persons with disabilities in the form of social pensions. The sub schemes exclusively for women are IGNWPS that is Indira Gandhi National Widow Pension Scheme. The eligibility for this is widows aged 40 years and above living below the poverty line and the amount is 300 rupees per month, 500 rupees for those of 80 years and above. The next sub scheme is National Family Benefit Scheme NFBS. In the event of death of a breadwinner in a household, the widowed family will receive lump sum assistance of 20,000. The breadwinner should have been between 18 to 60 years of age. The assistance would be provided in every case of death of a breadwinner in a household. The next sub scheme is National Maternity Benefit Scheme NMBS. Cash assistance of 500 rupees is provided to pregnant women of households below the poverty line up to first two live births provided they are of 19 years of age and above. The maternity benefit is to be disbursed in one installment 8 to 12 weeks prior to the delivery. In case of delay, it can be disbursed to the beneficiary even after the birth of the child. The next sub scheme is Annapurna scheme. This scheme aims to provide food security to meet the requirement of those senior citizens who though eligible have been uncovered under the IGNWPS. Under the Annapurna scheme, 10 kg of free rice is provided every month to each beneficiary. First, Rajiv Gandhi scheme for empowerment of adolescent girls. This scheme is also called as Sabala, is a centrally sponsored program of Government of India initiated on April 1st, 2011 under Ministry of Women and Child Development. The objectives of this program are enable the adolescent girls for self-development and empowerment, improve their nutrition and health status, promote awareness about health, hygiene, nutrition, adolescent reproductive and sexual health and family and child care. Upgrade home-based skills, life skills and integrate with the national skill development program for vocational skills. Mainstream out of school adolescent girls into formal or non-formal education. Provide information or guidance about existing public services such as PHC, CHC, post office, bank, police station, etc. An integrated package of services for adolescent girls include nutrition provision, iron and folic acid supplementation, health checkup and referral services, nutrition and health education, counseling or guidance on family welfare, ARSH, child care practices and home management life skill education and accessing public services, vocational training for girls age 16 and above under NSDP. The program would cover adolescent girls 11 to 18 years old under all ICDS projects in selected 200 districts in all states or union territories in the country. The target group would be subdivided into 11 to 15 and 15 to 18 years. The next program is Beti Bachao Beti Padao Save Girl Child Educate Girl Child. It is a government of India scheme that aims to generate awareness and improve the efficiency of welfare services meant for women. The Beti Bachao Beti Padao scheme has been introduced in October 2014 to address the issue of declined child sex ratio CSR. This is being implemented through a national campaign and focused multi-sectoral action in 100 selected districts covering all states and UTs. This is a joint initiative of Ministry of Women and Child Development, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and Ministry of Human Resource Development. 
speaking on the occasion of International Day of the Girl Child, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi called for the eradication of female feticide and invited suggestions from the citizens of India on Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. The objectives of this program are to prevent gender biased sex selective elimination, ensure survival and protection for the girl child, ensure education of the girl child. The strategies are implement a sustained social mobilization and communication campaign to create equal value for the girl child and promote her education. Place the issue of decline in CSR or SRB in public discourse, improvement of which would be an indicator for good governance. A shift has occurred in approaches to integrate women with development programs to eradicate poverty and enhance social economic status from welfare to development to empowerment. Welfare in general sense is the government support for the poor and otherwise disadvantaged members of the society usually through provision of free and subsidized goods and services. Development is the process in which someone or something grows or changes and becomes more advanced. Empowerment is the process of enhancing the capacity of individuals or groups to make choices and to transform those choices into desired actions and outcomes. Let us see the nature of welfare approach. It is conceived in a broad sense, the social service which includes five fields, namely education, medical and health, housing, income maintenance and personal welfare. It is substituting function of extended family and kinship system. Example provides affection, development, socialization, rehabilitative needs, facilitating economic growth, human resource development, example by education, producing and consuming society resources and sustaining individuals in periods of dependency, example sickness, disability, maternity, retirement, unemployment. Models of welfare includes free market, capitalistic, individualistic and socialist ideals. It has four levels remedial, preventive, developmental and supportive. Functions or emphasis of welfare is largely determined by philosophy and value preferences of the government, social and political situation and economic affordability, interrelated functions of services complementary roles of services at different levels. Coverage strategies included from the poor and most needy to all citizens in different socio-economic strata from arms giving, charity to social development in general, from particular to general and from selective to universal. The objectives include individuals achievement of optimal income security, income redistribution in society, providing basic needs like housing, healthing, material needs, education, environmental quality and safety and guarantee of social rights and social functioning. The welfare programs are very characteristic in terms of serving community interests, social value based, non-market activities, accessible to all and accountable to public. Execution process is defined as delivery through organizations government and non-government organizations where service providers are answerable to funding resources. Also to provide quality service with non-profit motive to meet different aspects of society need with direct focus on human consumption. Next let us see the nature of development approach. Webster defined development as causing something to unfold, to grow, to change for the better and to be realized. It endows certain potentials which the society should discover and maximize. The development approach possesses two essential features. Human being himself is the main resource to be utilized. Interpersonal relationships, especially soul role performance is the focus of concern. Three major themes of the development approach are, it is humanistic. 
it is phenomenological, it is developmental. The characteristics of development approach. Specific kind of group exercises is viewed as effective to enhance social functioning, counseling, common interest as the activity of the group and group action to improve social environment are usually seen in this approach. Common group goal is seen as a specific task agreed upon for a specific group session or series of sessions. The peer relationships among the members of the group will be established to attain the common goal and social growth. Hence, the effectiveness of the group goal achieving process is the primary target. Next, nature of empowerment approach. An empowering approach is about working in ways which empower people, ways which mean that people feel confident that they and the groups or organizations that they are involved in are exclusive and organized, that networks are formed, are cooperative and supportive to each other and ultimately they are influential. Empowered people have freedom of choice and action. This in turn enables them to better influence the course of their lives and the decisions which affect them. The four key elements of empowerment that must underlie institutional reform are access to information, inclusion participation, accountability, local organizational capacity. This is all about the paradigm shift from welfare to development to empowerment. Any questions? Hi ma'am, I am Navya. I have a doubt. How is Swachh Bharat Abhyan program is useful for women development? Swachh Bharat Abhyan has been very helpful for women by reducing open defecation which is the main motto of this scheme. This also helps in protecting women's self-respect, providing security by constructing toilets per each house and hence improving the health conditions as well. Any more questions? Well then, this is all about the programs for women. Thank you.